that chick surf. Hey folks, welcome to The Slice. I'm here with Robert Bettauer, and he's involved here at Bear Mountain in developing these clay courts. And uh, he's just gonna tell us a little bit about his history in tennis and uh, in Canadian tennis here. Well, thank you for inviting me, first of all. I think it's um, great that you've got a tennis blog going called The Slice, and um, look forward to following it in the future. For me, it's uh, tennis has been my life. I owe virtually everything I have to it, um, You know, certainly starting with my, my health. Uh, but I developed my career through tennis, um, and I'm an example of somebody you don't necessarily have to win Wimbledon uh, or the French Open to have a, a great pathway in the sport at various levels. Um, I met my wife through tennis when I was a tennis pro, um, and um, you know I've been able to um, you know not only develop a tennis career, so I'm still a coach and an active player and help in developing Bear Mountain, the right clay courts here. But the whole television piece and being able to interact with the, be be the, the best of all time yeah. in the sport, that's pretty cool. Right? Yeah. I mean, there's no way around that one. That I also got to be a national coach, an Olympic coach, two Olympic Games. Mm. Um, that I then uh, actually ran tennis development in, for Canada for many years and uh, was involved in, in, in helping build some of the um, building blocks that we have now in place like national training centers and uh, a lot more highly trained coaches and enough resources to understand that when you find talent kids, you've got to give them an opportunity to really right. play for several years on the tour. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and you need to have that ongoing coaching support. You need to pay attention to the sports science of both their training and recovery and nutrition and mental training. Um, and so it's incredibly exciting for me now to see where Canadian tennis uh, has been heading the last few years. Where do you think that uh, ten Canadian tennis is going in the next couple of years? Like, who do you think are going to be the the strongest players coming out of the team. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see the best. I mean, if we, if you thought we saw the best uh, the last few years with Raj Fossil and Bouchard, hang on to your seats because I think that Shapovalov and Oje Eliassime will build on that success. Yeah. And that's the credit you have to give to, to Raj Bouchard and Pospisil. Yeah. They, they broke through in the singles world. We've always had some success in doubles and we had the confidence for it. But the breakthroughs that those players have done in singles now is we're no longer just a doubles nation, uh, yeah. we're a singles nation. Cool. And, and Shapovalov and Oje Eliassime benefit from the breakthroughs that those players mm -hmm. made, so there's that confidence, that belief that you can play at that level. But they also benefit from just the, the more sophisticated support system in the country, right. from the ongoing training and camps and, and touring support and sports science. Uh, so these are highly skilled players, very confident. And you know we all saw what happened with Shapovalov this summer. Right. I mean, he, he broke through in Montreal with some extraordinary performances. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've never seen anything like the Nadal win. You know, that yeah. crowd was just going, you know, through the through the open air roof. Yeah. And uh, the fact that he beat Nadal on his terms uh, was just remarkable. And afterwards, yeah. Federer have said, you're looking at a top five player in the future. And that'll happen sooner rather than later. Yeah. And, you know, he followed up with a great US Open. Yeah. He's 50 in the world, 51 in the world right now. He's straight into all the big tournaments. I think that I, I wouldn't be surprised if Shapovalov gets himself uh, close enough to get a seating at the Aussie Open. You know, that's Next be, year, yeah. about 34, 35 in the world. Uh, and then watch out. Yeah, watch out. I think that with Raonic, Pospisil, and Bouchard, um, I know in sport in Canada, sometimes you'll think, we're doing good here in Canada, but if you compare us to the States, not really as good. You think about that in basketball and other things like that. But I think that Raonic, Bouchard, and Pospisil really changed that to make, it think, to make us think, no. These guys are great in Canada, and they're great in the world stage, with Raonic being as high as number five, I think, in the oh, world. Oh, yeah. Well, you heard it during the U.S. Open when, when they were all gushing over Shapovalov, yeah. and they said, what's going on up in Canada, <laughs> right? Because yeah. certainly on the men's side, um, there's been, um, I think Canada has outperformed uh, the U.S. in terms sure. of what the top players have accomplished. Um, I think on the women's side, Bouchard, when she had her big run, that was very exciting. You know, she's had her challenges now. Um, I think Bianca Andreescu and Francoise Abanda are taking up the mantle now, and both I think will be top 100 in, in the coming year. Um, but uh, you know, I, I mean, up until that point, the, we were ahead on the women's side too. But now with Sloane Stephens winning the U.S. Open, Madison Keys doing well, I think that the U.S. is starting to catch up a bit on the women's side. Right. Uh, but on the men, yeah, I think Canada's a story, and it's a very exciting story. And and you know what's neat too is that. 
the play, the kind of tennis that the Canadian players are playing yeah. is very assertive. It's very dynamic. I mean, Shapovalov is an incredibly exciting player. He's a shot maker. Um, he's a lefty, right, which I think is always gives you an extra 10% of kind of benefit on yeah. the court. And um, and he's got, I mean, when I, I had a chance to interview Wayne Gretzky this, this year, who was following yeah. Shapovalov, and he said, Guy, the kid's got ice in his veins, and he has that quality that great champions want, which is, I want to be on the ice for the last shift. Yeah. I want to be on center court exactly. and play Nadal in front of 12,000 people on national TV, as opposed to, ooh, I'm not sure I'm ready for it. No, no, give it to me. I want uh, it. Okay. And that makes all the difference in the world, right? That means you're a big match player. That means you, you're you going to thrive under the pressure. Yeah. It's not going to be a burden. Right. That's yeah. That's another thing I was going to ask. What do you think is setting Shapovalov's game apart from all these other players or everyone else in the world? Because he's about six foot, 160. Not a huge guy. He's about my height, but he's obviously able to do things with his game that is very exceptional. What do you think those things are? Well, I w it was um, watching him play Del Potro. Mm -hmm. And then Nadal live, two of the best players in the game. Yeah, you could see right away that they were struggling with his pace. Okay, they were struggling with the amount of spin and hop his ball had. Mm -hmm. That was a revelation to me. Right. right, it was a lot of I was you know chatting to you know, Marty Laurando who was coaching him beforehand. Said, yeah, he's got to get used to Nadal's pace. You know, he he warms up like he plays. Right, boom, the ball's bouncing yeah. all over the place right off the bat. And it was the other way around. Yeah. It was Nadal going like, whoa, what's this, right? right? And you could see that they were having to adjust. They were getting pushed back. Mm -hmm. So he generates great racket head speed off both the forehand and backhand. Mm -hmm. A lot of spin, a lot of pace. Uh, kind of a fearless style. So when you think he might be defending, he turns it into offense. And again, he's a lefty. Mm -hmm. He also, and I think everybody's noticed this, he moves very well for a big man. Yeah. And he's not a small guy. Like, he's 6'1", right. and he's 160. He'll be 180 before yeah, we're done. So, it up, yeah. you know, a big, strong guy. Yeah. He's going to hit his serve and the re his strokes harder in the next two years, not softer. So, right. like I said, very exciting. And the one thing that he has going for him, which makes him a marketing dream is he brings, he invites the audience into the performance, right? right? You can see that even in the U S open, the Americans loved him, right? Yeah. Because of the way he played, like he was entertaining yeah. them. And that's something I think Chapo Valov understands. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a tennis game and that's a profession and you want to be stay, always stay very focused on what it takes to be a great tennis player, right. but it's also an entertainment business, right? It's and true. if you can give fans both quality tennis and entertainment all the way, that's exactly right. So, in your involvement here at Bear Mountain, if you didn't know, we're in Bear Mountain Country Club in Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And uh, Robert's been a huge part of making these beautiful clay courts behind us happen and get built. What was kind of your vision and goal um, to have these courts help Canadian tennis and uh, Tennis Canada? Well, I was very fortunate. So, I'm the CEO of PICE, the Pacific Institute for Sport Excellence, which is a sport institute here that provides support to all the Olympic and mm. Paralympic athletes. Victoria has a high number of national teams here because of our climate and, and facilities. And uh, the new owner of Bear Mountain uh, three years ago, Dan Matthews, uh, was getting to know folks around the community, came to visit me at, at Pisces, did the tour, sat in my office, and he saw a couple of tennis pictures of mine on the wall. And he goes, you know, I've always thought that, um, you know, part of Bear Mountain Resort and the real estate development here, tennis would be a really good addition. And I said, absolutely. And if you're going to do tennis, do red clay and eight courts. And he went, well, why would I do that? And I said, well, red clay, first of all, is actually the most common playing surface in the world but we don't have any of it to speak of yeah. in british columbia right. so that would make uh bear mountain a very unique and desirable place to play tennis in um, secondly eight courts is the threshold to run professional events or okay. national provincial events right you need that um, and i said part of the intent not only would be to create a great you know club membership for the community but also to be an ongoing place where we can run provincial national international tournaments for juniors for open players for senior players and um, he bought into it, right? And and I mean, I, I can all I can say is thank you, Dan Matthews, uh, for buying into the vision and making it happen because it's um, you know it's it's a very significant investment. And so the eight red clay courts are set up. We opened them this June. They play fantastic for brand new red clay courts. Yeah, uh, we already had a couple of events on them. Uh, we'll have uh, I think next April the Western Canadian Senior Championships. We'll have a, probably at least one ITF Juniors event, and then in the future we're looking to have futures and, yeah. and challengers and all that. This winter, December January, two bubbles will go up to cover all eight courts. Right. So we're going to have the the full indoor complement as well. 
And actually, the courts are going to get a little wider. Um, right now, this is the smaller configuration with the bubbles. Uh, they're actually going to expand several feet on the ends and the sides. Like between each court? And we're, well, we're going to put a viewing platform between oh, okay. the four courts on either end. So okay. people can actually come out onto the courts oh, and right watch on. play, which, cool. which is really cool. And then in the next year or two, we'll build a pavilion as well between the two sets of courts. So in the summer months, you can sit on top and view match play on either side. Exactly. And it's going to be absolutely a world-class tennis facility. It's in a, you know, you you can see now the setting here is yeah. the best. You're playing next to a mountain looking at Mount Baker. Yeah. And um, you're also right next to a five-star uh, Western Hotel, so ideal for hosting events. So uh, exactly. um, I feel really uh, very fortunate to have met Dan and that he saw the, the benefit of this type of facility. And now we've got Russ Hartley, one of the top tennis directors in the country. He was the head pro and tennis director at Vancouver Lawn for 30 years. Cool. Originally from Victoria, so he's come home to run this, and he's got this place humming, and very exciting. It's awesome. So if you're watching this and you live in the Pacific Northwest, or you don't, and you want to make a destination tennis uh, getaway, come to Bear Mountain, check it out, go online and look at all the facilities they have, and uh, come play on the new red courts here at Bear Mountain. Anytime. Thanks for talking with you're us, Robert. You're welcome. Oh, my pleasure. Yeah, great stuff. For sure. Thank <laughs> you.